Roof flashings. Now, this is something that the designers of the roof profiles got absolutely no control over because this is where the installers make up their mind what to do. So the flashings are used to finish off a roof on the perimeters and you've got apron flashings, barge flashings, the typical flashing you put in, um, tray flashings that you put over the roof for penetrations. So all sorts of flashings and the subject of capillary action has to be considered for every flashing that has got to be put in. So we'll look at water, capillary reaction, flashings, and what happens when you have water, a bit, little bit of wind maybe, um, and just in how flashing should be detailed, and the main reason is try to eliminate capillary action. So what you've just seen here is the typical installation where you've got an apron flashing and then you've got a wall flashing that covers the apron flashing. And where you've got the materials, the, the two, the apron flashing and the wall flashing touching, and you've got a bit of wing, then you've got water that is sucked up and partially pumped up. It goes over the edge of the apron and it goes into the roof cavity. So it's up to the installer to design a flashing that's got a, a little bit of a, a feather on it so that you don't get that capillary action happening. And that's in how the flashing is designed and that's entirely up to the installer. Now, the apron flashing is one of the most common flashings on a metal roof. And this is what the apron flashing commonly looks like. So there's two pieces, there's a corner, and this usually happens on the corner of a roof. The correct way to do this joint is to pop rivet. So what you would do is you would drill your pop rivets in here, pull your pop rivets out, undo this, run a seal all the way along here under the line of the pot rivets and then put the pot rivets back and then you would put an over seal right there as a secondary precaution. Now what some roofers do, what they normally do is they would go in, cut the joint, put the pot rivets in and just run a bit of silicon right along the edge and the idea is the over seal will then stop the water from seeping in along the joint. The problem is that if you get a break in the seal or even if you don't do your sealant properly and say you stop your sealant right there, right, uh, thinking that if you seal all the way up to where that last pop rivet is that you don't need to seal that, you run into a problem. There's capillary action that's going to pull water in right along there and then the water is going to go in and underneath this flashing so as a result if you leave any section of this flashing unsealed you can see that there's water that runs in there down there running across and then gradually climbing up the roof and into that corner. Another area that can cause capillary action problems is where you've got a flashing and you've got a screw that is put through the flashing and you've got a spot right there where water can get drawn in via capillary action. It goes, gets sucked up between the flashing and the rib of your roof and water gets sucked in. And you have a zone right where the screw is and water will then hit the thread and then run down the roof so you potentially you have a leak spot right where this screw is. 
So this screw will get wet and then the water will then run down the threads and then into your roof. So there you are, we've covered a little bit about capillary action and flashings. And in the last of this series on capillary action, we'll look at the role that the building blanket plays and also sarking under the roof, under tile roofs, how sarking and blanket insulation because of capillary action will cause leaks into your roof.